Hello and welcome. Today's video is going to be about installing a mini OSD on the APM version 252 version 5. A uh, user named Earthling01 on my YouTube channel asked me to come up with a quick step by step for it, so I did. Hopefully, it's not that confusing. But, anyways, I'm going to jump basically into it right now. Um, if you're ver the first thing I want to get over is what version of firmware you're running on your 252. If you're running version 3.12, you're fine. You don't have to do any firmware updates. But if you happen to take a update to version 3.21, you're going to have to install custom firmware. I'll add a link to it in my description. Or I also have a video showing how to restore your APM back to version 3.12. But honestly, I would just go with the version 3.21. So download the firmware and open up Mission Planner and go to Connect. The reason why I say Connect is just confirm you're actually running version 3.12 before you do this or 3.21. So right up on the title here, it should say version 3.12. If it doesn't say there, you can go to Compass flight. not healthy. Hmm, got interrupted. You can go to flight data and you can go to messages, I believe. And here it'll also say what version you're at, version 3.12. So if it does say version 3.21, download the firmware, um, disconnect, go to initial setup. Go to load custom firmware. So extract the file you downloaded from my Google Drive or wherever you got the firmware from, and then just simply double click on this guy. All right, so it's completed. For some reason, if you get any error at all, like I did at the beginning, just try it again. If you get a ver verification error on the uh, right process that just happened now, it's really important you don't unplug the APM just go back to um, pick previous firmware and then just whatever it's defaulted on just go here and click on this guy and just let it write it and then you can try again but usually you shouldn't have a problem if you're running version 3.15 and you want to run custom firmware as well I'll add a link to that too I believe I have that on my Google Drive okay so I'll jump into the video now I have the APM and the receiver out of the quad. You don't have to do this. Don't do this. I'm just doing this to simplify it so I can show you with it out of the quadcopter so it might be a little bit easier to understand because it's going to get a little bit messy. So crack open up your APM. In all my videos I suggest taking a felt marker and marking this side and this side any side but just make sure you just do the one side because once you crack these two boards apart you might get confused which way the board goes back on so just find white out or something and do that in my description I'll try to do some searches again I think I had found some before but if you don't have an end like this uh, and you don't want to solder I'll show a link to where you can order a cable like this it should also come with ends too I'm not too sure yet if it does, you might have to use something, a pick or something to open this up and switch the cables around. But anyways, once you get a, the end like this or whatever, the way it goes is space RX TX space ground. And the way this guy gets plugged in is like this on the bottom of the APM there. If you flip it this way, it actually says Yort. So it goes space RX TX space space. So if you don't have this cable, if I can't find one, you can just solder as well. I'll just crack open this case carefully. And uh, your kit should have came with cables like this. So what you'll want to do is just remove the black ends carefully and tin them. But you should know how to solder probably. And the way this goes is try taking a picture of this if the quality quality doesn't come out good here it goes 5 volts RX TX space and then ground so then you just want to carefully solder your wires 
on the second and the third pin there and there for your RX and your TX. All right, but I'm just gonna show you with this cable here, so I'm just gonna put this back in the case now. All right, that was a pain in the butt. All right, so there's a lot of wires here, so it can get a little bit more confusing, but I'm leaving it just so you know which wires go where after like this. You shouldn't have to worry about this anyways, and I'll explain why there's one missing after. So don't remove that wire. All right, so with the mini OSD, and the way I'm gonna show it is less solder as possible. So on the bottom of your CX-20, you have your five volt rails there for your gimbals and your 12 volts here. So if you have gimbal uh, or a gimp, yeah, if you have gimbals or whatever, it's not gonna be too handy what I'm showing you. I strongly suggest soldering anyways, but if not, I'll just show you a quick way how to do it. So with one of the ends that came with your kit as well, you should have one of these. If not, you're gonna have to find one somewhere. And um, what you'll wanna do here is remove one of the wires out of it. And then on the other end, swap the black and red. So it first goes red, then black for your positive. So on the mini OSD, and I'll quickly jump around here for a second and show you this guy here. So here's the pin out here. And in case you don't have this shell, I'll just pop this guy out and then show it like that somehow. So you can see the way the pinouts go. All right. So this guy here gets plugged into the back of the CX-20 on the first row here for your five volts. Make sure it's the five volts in the back there. If it's 12 volts, you'll try this thing maybe instantly. I'm not too sure. And then the way this guy goes here, because we swapped the two wires, the blank one is on BLK, and then black is ground, and then five volts. So you're left with the three pins here like that. All right. So next is your transmitter for your video. And again, I suggest doing the soldering. I keep saying that because this guy here comes with an end like this, but I'm not sure what kind of transmitter you guys are using. So that usually just plugs like that. But continuing without the soldering, the um, mini OSD should have came with some cables like this as well. So what you can do is just use this to plug into the CX-20 on the bottom. So the way this goes here is on the bottom, it's your positive and the second one is your ground. And the center pin here is for your video in. That's the only one we should care about because this guy here has a built-in speaker. So it's fine like that. So I'm gonna go orange on the outside and black in the middle, like that. Make sure you don't get this crossed or you might fry. So this guy here now on the CX-20, if I can lift this up here. So the first one here is your plus volt and your negative. So it goes like that. And then you're just left with this one wire. And this one wire here gets plugged into your mini OSD on the bottom. Like that. And I'm not gonna show you with the camera because I'm not sure what kind of cameras you guys have, but they're all basically the same process. It comes with a video out on them and that would get plugged into the top rail right there on the corner, right above this guy, and then just plug the ground wire at the end or anywhere else on the APM or anywhere you want. All right, so we're done with this part just to get it booted up, just to see if it works. You don't have to do the RX and the TX in this step. Usually I prefer doing it at steps. So the first step is the only wires you should have are these ones, these three wires here on the OSD just to confirm it works. Then the next step is add your video. And after the last step, add your RXTX. If you do it in steps, just in case something doesn't work, you'll figure out what's happening. All right, so as it is now, we can plug this guy in and see if we get anything on the monitor. So I'm gonna plug this battery into the CX-20.
So now it's just going to be waiting for the heartbeat because it doesn't have the RX and the TX hooked up. So that'll be this step right now. All right, with the two wires coming out of your APM, depending on what color code you use, I just used yellow and blue. So we're going to continue with that. So yellow is your RX, and that guy goes there. And then blue is your TX. If you have telemetry, you don't need to add the uh, blue one, but you have to have the telemetry and the mini OSD on at the same time. Otherwise, it's always going to sit at the heartbeat screen. All right, so that's good like that. And then I can just plug it back in again to see if I get any information. All right, so now you can move your APM or your quadcopter around, making sure it moves while you move it with your hand. And that's all good. So the other hint here is if you don't have these two red lights, that means you're going to have to run a jumper wire. I'll unplug this because it's annoying. So if you didn't have those two red lights and you only have the one red light there, you're going to have to run a jumper wire from the 5 volts here. You're going to have to skin this wire back or find another 5 volts that's on the same rail. Make sure it's not from a different source. So I suggest just skinning this wire back and adding it. And add a jumper wire from this 5 volts to the 12 volts on this side. Or alternatively would be even easier is just hook up the one on this bottom rail here, put the five volts there on the bottom, and then from the top pin, run a jumper wire from that top pin to the five volt side. It's up to you how you wanna do that. Um, I'll just show you quickly the way I, I do this, cause I know it's really messy right now, but the reason why I have this cable off, I'll unplug this. So the way I have it hooked up, or the way I do when I use it, is again I use this cable here, and this guy here is plugged right into the 12 volt main where the two main batteries come in for the CX20, the plus red wire and the negative ground, black one. And then uh, this cable here, do the same setup with it, and I got this wire from the minus one on the receiver. This receiver has, the way it comes stock, is it's actually on, if I can get it back in there. On one, it has the three wires like that, but the black and red aren't needed anyways. So the best thing to do is just to use the red and the black here, the positive and negative, to power your mini USD. The bonus of that is you get to keep this inside the shell instead of running wires on the bottom of it. The more stuff inside, the better it is. So what you'll want to do again is uh, plug this guy back in. On this end again, make sure to reverse the wire. Make sure it goes red first, then black. And then here, just gets plugged back in where I showed you before. Like that. Now you're left with this one wire. This one wire now can go right here on number five. And, uh, and then you're left with three pins on the bottom. And on the APM 2.6, this is just your number five wire. This is the wire that controls your switches. So make sure it gets in there pretty good. Make sure it can't fall out easily because uh, you're going to want that wire in because that's for your uh, return to home and your GPS hold and all that. And the other wires aren't needed. All right, guys, hopefully this wasn't that confusing. I'm sorry about it being messy. And this video might be a little bit dark as well. But anyways, like and subscribe and that's it guys.